Over the weekend, the Arizona Democratic Party censured Senator Kirsten Sinema for her vote against making an exception to the filibuster to pass crucial voting rights legislation. But that censure is a symbolic gesture, and Sinema sadly isn't up for re-election until 2024. Still, while Sinema does nothing, Republicans in our own state are very busy proposing major changes to Arizona election law, despite their own review of the 2020 election, they're finding no evidence of fraud. NBC News reports, quote, proposals introduced in the state house or the Senate would add an additional layer to the state's voter ID requirement, such as fingerprints, and stipulate the hand counting of all ballots by default. Other legislation would require that paper ballots be printed with holograms and watermarks. Beyond ridiculous. Still with us, Simone Sanders and Susan Del Percio. Uh, Simone, question to you. Why did Joe Biden, do you think, why do you think he came so late to the voting rights battle, to publicly opposing the filibuster? He did this great speech in Atlanta a few weeks ago. But what was the thinking inside the White House in 2021? Why put off the voting rights struggle and go for infrastructure and build back better first? We lost a lot of time, didn't we? Well, Maddie, I think the president uh, was actually very frank and clear um, with folks about his thinking there. He did a town hall earlier in the le year in 2021 where he was asked this very question. And the president basically said that he had two legislative packages. At that point, it was one big package. It was a bipartisan infrastructure deal uh, that was broken up, bipartisan infrastructure deal, and then the Build Back Better agenda. And he wanted to, go to get those done. And then the next legislative fight he would take on would be voting rights. Folks can debate and argue about whether that was the best strategy uh, in terms of publicly, the president himself publicly coming out on those issues. And he said, why? You know, look, he said he didn't think he'd be able to get the support of all of the senators and members of Congress that he needed if he started with the voting rights fight first. That was, in fact, his thinking. Uh, hindsight is, in fact, 2020. I think now the reality is that, yes, the vote um, on the debate of the bills, the debate and the actual vote on the bills and the filibuster did fail last week, but it's not over. Uh, Democrats can bring the bills to the floor in different ways. They can break the bills up. There is bipartisan, or there should be, rather, a bipartisan need and sense of urgency to address these issues. The bills you're talking about in Arizona, Medi, they just don't affect Democrats. They affect Arizona voters, period. Yes. Democrats, Republicans, well young folks, old folks. And so I think that we have allowed this conversation about voting rights to be held had had as if only it is something that affects Democrats or it's just an issue, if you will, for black voters when it's an issue for democracy. And that's how we should be discussing it. Yes, indeed. And that is how we should be discussing it. And interestingly, there is no bipartisan support for federal voting rights legislation, Susan, but there is a new bipartisan push to reform the very archaic Electoral Count Act of the 19th century, which some would argue helped cause the 1-6 events. Do you think that's good enough? Can Democrats trust Mitch McConnell and co on this particular proposed reform, breaking it off from the rest of the voting rights legislation and doing a deal just to fix the Electoral Count Act? Well, I think they should get it done. At least it's something that is you can point to and say we achieved this. There's talk about Biden doing a couple of executive orders on voting rights. He should get that done as well. It goes back to our previous conversation. Small ball, get the victories you can. Simone is absolutely right about this being an issue, though, that affects all Americans. It affects Democrats and Republicans. That disastrous bill in Arizona is going to make it so hard for people in Arizona, all people, all of them, to, to vote the way they used to vote. Like, it will unpen the system. Ironically, it will probably be one Republican in the state Senate that prevents this becoming law, because the state legislature in, Ar in Arizona is 1816 Republican Democrat, and this one Republican will not sign on to it. So it probably won't go anywhere. And this is probably more Election Day, you know, propaganda, if you will. But these are very dangerous times. We should be fo focused on expanding access to the ballot, not restricting yeah. it. Yeah, when you have Joe Manchin running around Congress saying, well, everyone will vote fine, you think, okay, is he lying? Is he being ignorant? He's from West Virginia. Uh, who knows, you know. But when you have Kirsten Sinema, who's from Arizona, you know, some would argue ground zero of voter suppression efforts. It's bizarre how this has been allowed to continue. Uh, Simone, I had Arizona Congressman Ruben Gallego on my show last night on MSNBC. Uh, have a listen to what he had to say about Senator Sinema and Manchin. 
these two senators have agency. We can't just give an excuse that like, well, everyone else needed to, didn't do their jobs. No, these are adults. These are people that have run. These are people that have had opinions, yes. by the way, contrary to their filibuster uh, in the past. Actually, as a matter of fact, just a month ago, they voted uh, to exempt the debt limit from the filibuster. So that's yes. where we need to focus on. We need to make sure that people understand that this senator, Senator Sinema and Senator Manchin, purposely torpedoed this agenda and have purposely torpedoed other Democratic agendas, and we sh should hold them accountable by whatever means we can. Simone, is it time for Joe Biden, as leader of the party, not just as president, to be, I don't know, a bit more Frank Underwood-esque, or at least LBJ-esque, and call these two senators out, hold them accountable, <laughs> especially cinema who's vulnerable in Arizona? Shouldn't there be political consequences for Joe Manchin and especially Kirsten Cinema? Well, I don't know about Frank Underwood, Maddie. I saw the whole series. But I will say that the president has... I, look, I think the president has been as clear and as frank as he can be. You know, he went... He's he's gone up to the Senate at this point at least two times to, to a Senate caucus luncheon, a Dem caucus luncheon, to make the case for his agenda. Once on... Um, uh, once on the Build Back Better agenda uh, and the... By, bipartisan infrastructure deal, and then he did it again, and most recently on voting rights. The president is using the tools in his ballywick and the bully pulpit of the White House. Uh, Kristen Sinema is receiving consequences for not just her vote against um, or her unwillingness to support the agenda last week, but her, her vote against raising the minimum wage uh, in the COVID-19 relief bill, her yeah. unwillingness, frankly, to be clear about where she stands on a number of bills. The Arizona Democratic Party, they got her elected, and if they are willing to censure her so publicly two years before an actual election, it must mean something's cooking in the water. Yeah, it's outrageous that millions of Democratic voters and activists helped get her elected and she just turns her back on them. It's outrageous.